and I just learned it as a neuroscience student in here, so I really need to make sure that I get my facts straight. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to be in trouble. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an amateur when it comes to that area, but I find it's a very, very, very exciting area. And actually, there's a few different little sciences that I find very interesting. Um, who's heard of epigenetics? Oh, a few people, right? That's, that's really good. Um, I don't expect many people to have heard of it. It's a bit of a controversial science, but what the science actually says is that genes are actually not you know, predetermined anymore, because that's what they used to say, they're predetermined. But what they are saying is your environment and your lifestyle is actually influencing uh, how these genes express themselves. And I'll talk about that a little bit more, but I find it, it's a fascinating idea um, that emotions can affect the quality of your genes. So I'll talk a little bit about that. I'll talk a little bit about neuroscience. Um, I'm also going to talk about neurolinguistics or neurolinguistics programming. And I'd like to do a little bit of a demonstration around that. Um, see if I can have a volunteer in, in a second. Um, who's heard of neurolinguistics, neurolinguistic programming? Uh, see, there's a, there's a big group there. Yeah. Um, it's a fantastic tool, especially because most of us have so many conversations with themselves. Who's talking to themselves sometimes? Yeah, we yeah. all do, right? Yeah. So yeah. it would be really good if you could know and if you could work out how to communicate better with yourself. It would be really a fantastic thing. So I'm going to talk about these things, but I'm also really interested, and I've mentioned it a few times, um, I'm really interested in energy. Um, anybody from India? Not that I am, but you know. Um, <laughs> anybody from China? Japan? No? Because all of these, uh, these countries, these uh, eastern countries, they have energy from a very, very old tens of thousands of years. So in India you have prana energy, in China you have chi energy, and in Japan you have reiki energy. So I got reiki one and two, and uh, that is about 115 years old. I think it started in the early 20th century. So that's a very recent thing. Um, but you also have uh, in the traditional Chinese medicine, you have the radiant system. And the radiant system is about energy flowing through your body. So I studied kinesiology, and it uses that energy to identify whether a thought is, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with it. But it basically shows you whether there's an energy block in your body or when your body is speaking by something. So I find this whole energy is really, um, really interesting. Now, who's ever walked in the room and they feel they can cut the tension with a knife? Yeah, me too. Um, anybody ever, anybody take public transport? Yeah, I do. Ever stood next to somebody in the bus and think, oh, you're standing way too close to me, or this makes me feel uncomfortable, right? All of that stuff is energy. So when the energy starts to cross and somebody's got bad energy, you feel that, and you don't want to be with that person. So one of the things that we do in your pathway mapping is we balance that energy out. So neuropathic mapping is an intuitive way of um, rewiring your brain. So we look at the science around it, and we look at the energy around it. 